North Wilkesboro Speedway opened its doors on May 18th of 1947 to a, a crowd in estimate of excess of 10,000 people who showed up to see one of the famous Flock Brothers win the race. On October 16, 1949, North Wilkesboro Speedway held the eighth and final race of the 1949 Strictly Stock Division. At the end of the day, Red Byron walked away as the first ever NASCAR champion. I'm Primetime Chuck, and I'm here at beautiful North Wilkesboro Speedway. It's a glance back at NASCAR's past, the past that they'd like you to forget. I put a lot of passion and time into my website, trying to bring this sport back to its roots. NASCAR sold out to the corporations, and they've forgotten what real stock car racing looks like. So today, I'm going to show you around this place, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what stock car racing means to me. I hope you'll enjoy my little short video, and I hope it'll make you think about pressuring the sponsors and NASCAR into remembering what makes racing great. And that's not the corporations and the sponsorships, but the people, the racing, and the racetracks. As I stand here at this once great racetrack on Halloween of 2011, I'm sad to say that this racetrack now looks like a ghost town. That sign behind me sure does bring back memories, doesn't it? Back when racing was more than a single file lap parade and drivers didn't get out of their car and mumble 500 sponsors before thanking the fans. Things shouldn't be the way they are right now. People need to remember what places like this meant to the sport. The fans need to raise enough hell to stop all this, stop this corporate corruption and where the manufacturers are running the racers like what happened at Talladega. Jack Roush, I don't believe you no more than I believe that the sky is green. We all know that manufacturers have a big impact on this sport, and they should, but it should only be in the garage area. It should be in blueprinting the cars, motors. It should be in providing technical support. But as far as it goes to what happens on that racetrack, team orders need to leave. They need to go the way of the dinosaur. I'm here at North Wilkesboro Speedway's concession stand. Remember when Cokes at NASCAR tracks were a dollar? I bet some of you do. Now, you go to an ISC track, you pay four bucks. And that whole extra three dollars ain't for, because of inflation. Don't, if you don't think ISC pockets a little bit of that money on every Coke, you're crazy. This is just another example of greed seeping into every aspect of the sport. The sponsors and NASCAR have just flat out gotten greedy. Walking underneath the famous grandstands at North Wilkesboro, many, many fans made this walk. It's a reminder of days that are gone. A day when the fans mattered and when the racers were still racers, men were still men. The place gives me goosebumps. I wish that NASCAR would go back to short tracks like this. I wish that we could go back to real racing. NASCAR's betrayed old tracks like this that made them what they are in favor of going to places like Fontana, settling out for Hollywood. It's a shame. This track's got a lot of life and a lot of history. And the TV re revenues well cover NASCAR's expenses. So for them to say that a place like this is just too small or just isn't worth it anymore, 
they're fooling themselves. The people in and around this racetrack, the people that grew up around it, love this place. The fans love places like this. The short tracks all across America. NASCAR needs to go back. NASCAR needs to remember. Remember what makes racing racing. Stock car racing is better than IndyCar and Formula One. And one of the main reasons it is, is because of the contact. People want to see people rubbing fenders. That cliche in Days of Thunder, it was sad and it makes us laugh, but it's so true. Rubbing is racing. And if we don't see rubbing, we ain't racing. One reason NASCAR won't buy this place from Bruton Smith and pay the 14 million is because it says the investment is not worth it. That the grandstands are too small. They're not too small if you fill this place up. They're not too small if you add on. They're not too small if you bring back a small piece of history to NASCAR. They're not small if you make a bigger hole and a bigger place for NASCAR in the current generation's heart and if you mend some fences with the past generation. NASCAR's media is so hyped and contrived right now. There's only a few good analysts in the sport and only a few good writers. Everybody else is worried about writing fluff and trying to hype up what happened on the track and making more out of it than it is instead of letting the action speak for itself. That's because we ain't got a lot of racing left. And you know what? People can call into question my credibility all they want, but people like me are what this sport needs. You need real media, and you need somebody to stand up against the grain and tell the truth. I am NASCAR media. The sport's in bad trouble. The ratings are down, profit margins are down, everything's going downhill and has been ever since Brian France took over. You could say that the sport belongs in the care center. It needs help. It needs urgent medical attention. And contrary to what NASCAR may tell you, the grandstands ain't empty because of the economy. They're empty because the racing action flat out sucks. Nobody wants to pawn anything or sell something to come to a race when all we see is a high-speed single-file parade. I want to put the sport back in victory lane. I'm in a place that all you so-called fans would love to be. I want you to stop making excuses for NASCAR and start fighting them. Let's get the sport back where we can all celebrate. Woo! Yeah, baby!